We understood nothing at all, not what it meant to wish for a miracle, nor its price. The witches from Madoka Magica are some of the most beautifully creepy things I've seen outside of a Junji Ito manga. The abstract way in which their art style don't fit with the rest of the anime creates this eerie, uncanny feeling throughout every single witch conflict. It felt like watching an episode of Sailor Moon and suddenly a character from Chowder or The Amazing World of Gumball just showed up out of nowhere and wrecks everything. These witches have a foreboding aura to them that transcends human understanding, and it gets even more horrifying when you realize that these eldritch abominations are simply just magical girls who have fallen into despair. Every single witch was once just an innocent little girl. All of them had lives, all of them had dreams, and all of them had a wish. A wish that they would do anything to fulfill regardless of the consequences. And unfortunately for these little girls, their wishes were fulfilled by a wolf in sheep's clothing. One major thing about the witches in this series that you may have noticed is that they all consistently have German names. For example, the most foreboding witch in the series is named Walpurgisnacht, which translates to Walpurgisnacht, a holiday associated with witchcraft in Germany. You would think that most of these witches came from magical girls from Germany, but then Sayaka, who is originally from Japan, becomes a witch and her name is Octavia von Senderkopf, a German name. The same goes for Madoka when we see her potential witch's name being Kremhild Gretchen. There's even more German in the story when we see the familiars in the barrier of the witch Gertrude also sing a song completely in German. So why is there so much random German in this Japanese story? Well, the answer is a whole lot deeper than you think. For you see, Puella Magi Madoka Magica is actually inspired by a very old but very influential story that came out of, you guessed it, Germany. I want to examine this little German story and look at the similarities between it and Madoka Magica and hopefully it may lead us to learning about the true horror behind this anime. So strap in and let's discuss a tragic little story known by many names but most commonly referred to simply as Faust. So what is Faust? The version of Faust that I'll be using for this analysis will be the play published in 1806 by playwright Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. Goethe also loved keeping it simple, so he also titled his play simply Faust. This play is the most famous and influential version of Faust, and the version that I personally believed inspired the creation of Madoka Magica's story. Goethe's version of Faust begins in heaven, where a version of the devil named Mephistopheles, or Mephisto for short, makes a bet with God. Mephisto bets that he can influence this guy named Heinrich Faust and turn him from a decent person into someone nefarious. Faust is an aging scholar who is unsatisfied with his life and is trying to collect every piece of knowledge in the world in hopes of feeling contentment and enlightenment. Mephisto's wager starts with him disguising himself as a poodle to meet Faust to offer him a deal. The devil will serve Faust in all of his pursuits in life as he seeks out pleasures and delights that the average human being cannot. In exchange, once Faust experiences what he considers a moment of perfect happiness and euphoria on earth, Mephisto can claim his eternal soul. This is actually where the term Faustian bargain comes from and this story is where you get the iconic deal with the devil trope. After Faust makes his deal, he experiences a lot of joy in his magically enhanced life, but at the same time, he experiences much tragedy brought about by the deal. Faust even dooms the woman he loves by putting a bun in her oven illegitimately, leading to her taking out that bun prematurely, landing her in jail, and eventually costing her her life. 
Despite this tragic loss, Fao still goes on to live his life and experience all the things that he wants to experience. Eventually, Faust does experience this world transcending, enlightening, blissful feeling that he's been wanting his entire life, and Mephistopheles is ready to claim his soul for all eternity. Fortunately for Faust, the cause of his perfect moment was when he envisioned a utopia where all mankind is free from their suffering and where everyone can be happy. This pure intention from Faust proved Mephisto wrong since his demonic deal didn't sway Faust's heart away from righteousness, so his soul was allowed into heaven. The story of Faust deals with a lot of different themes, righteousness, faith, morality, and sacrifice among many others. It goes beyond a be careful what you wish for moral parable because at the end of it all, Faust got what he wished for and was rewarded for it. I do want to note that there are other versions of the story where Faust doesn't get a redemption and his soul is condemned to hell forever, but Goethe is apparently a fan of happy endings. This is why I believe that his retelling of Faust is the version that was used to inspire Madoka Magica. If you haven't picked it up already, Madoka Magica is a classic case of a Faustian bargain with QB acting as Mephisto. Kyubi comes off as a neutral creature, but it is deceptive, it is manipulative, and it is constantly pushing the girls to make their wishes despite knowing what it does to them. This mirrors Mephisto's temptation in Faust. Mephisto even first appears to Faust as a cute little poodle, much like how Kyubi hides behind its cute facade as a little cat, rat, fox thing? Much like a demon, its entire nature is filled with lies. Yubi hides behind this adorable little facade to trick both the magical girls and the audience into believing that it is on their side. If QB is Mephisto, then it is pretty obvious that the magical girls in the story represent Faust. Each girl, much like Faust, had a wish that they wanted to fulfill in their lives on Earth and made a deal with an otherworldly creature to achieve that wish. Most of the girls, much like Faust in the beginning of his story, had wishes that were more focused on self-satisfaction. In the story of Faust, Faust wanted to experience a moment that he described as feeling like heaven on earth for himself. In Madoka Magica, Sayaka wished for the boy that she liked to be able to play violin again. Kyoko wished for everyone to listen to her father's preaching. Homura wished to be with Madoka again and to protect her. And I'm pretty sure that this witch was a magical girl who wished for a really, really good piece of cheesecake. Which, honestly, same. All of these wishes stemmed from a place of fulfilling one's own personal desire. Even Homura, who wishes to protect Madoka, does so out of a personal selfish desire to be with and to keep her safe despite any potential harm her actions might bring to the world. These wishes brought temporary feelings of hope and happiness to the girls, but the key word here is temporary. These hopes were engulfed by despair when their wishes inevitably turned sideways. Homura ended up in a Groundhog Day style time loop forced to watch the person she loves most in the world end up deceased or becoming the witch that ends the world herself. Kyoko's wish led to her father snapping and leaving her basically a super orphan. Sayaka's wish ended up with the love of her life leaving her for her friend. Here's an interesting fact about Sayaka's despair and the witch that she turns into. Sayaka's witch form, Octavia von Senderkopf takes the form of a mermaid as a reference to the original story of The Little Mermaid. This darker version of the story has The Little Mermaid give up her life as a mermaid to be with a prince who ultimately leaves her for someone else. This reflects Sayaka's own story of love and betrayal, hence why the mermaid motif represents her despair very well. Luckily for us, there is one girl who ends up breaking everyone out of their Faustian bargains at the cost of her own mortality. The magical girl to end all magical girls. The representation of Faust's transcendent moment of selflessness. The only person who was able to make a proper wish and get one over on QB. And she is, of course, Monica Kaname.
aka Madokami, aka Gataka, aka she can totally be Goku, don't even at me. Madoka makes a wish to eliminate every single witch in the past, present, and future by her own hands. In her final moments as a mortal, Madoka wished for a world where magical girls no longer needed to suffer in any timeline. Much like how Faust went out envisioning his perfect utopia where everyone is happy and free from suffering. And much like Faust, Madoka was able to transcend her deal with her devil by being completely pure of heart. The wings in her godly transcendent design invokes the imagery of the angels who whisked Faust away into heaven when he bested Mephisto. What's even more interesting is that the woman who Faust loved and eventually caused the death of was named Gretchen, the same name of Modica's witch form, which further connects these two characters. Unlike the other magical girls, her wish was completely selfless and altruistic and motivated by righteousness. Her entire wish only benefited other magical girls. Even though she got an infinite amount of power, she personally didn't benefit as she couldn't see her family or friends anymore due to her new role as the god and protector of all magical girls. The story of Madoka Magica is a retelling of Faust, but with cute anime girls. It is a reminder to all of us that our dreams, our wishes, and our desires all have a cost, and sometimes those costs aren't worth what you initially wanted. It also reminds us to learn to find contentment in what we have and what exists in front of us despite our longing for something more. Sometimes being a magical girl fighting the forces of evil isn't all sunshine and rainbows. Sometimes life just happens and it can be bleak but much like Madoka and Faust in the end, you should always stick to your morals and to your sense of righteousness. Thank you all so much for watching the video all the way to the end. Let me know in the comments down below your thoughts on Monica, Faust, and if you want to see more content like this. Also let me know if I got anything wrong about Faust, about Monica, or about anything in the video since I love having discussions with you guys in the comments section. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you next time with some more lukewarm takes.